Finally, uh, to speak, we have Les Stark, uh, author of the book Hempstone Heritage, who's an expert on industrial hemp. Good afternoon, and thank you, Senator Leach, and everybody here. Uh, it's good to see you, Eva. All right. As all of us here know and are well aware, the days of cannabis and hemp prohibition are numbered by economics. It's a natural, non-toxic, non-lethal, renewable, sustainable resource for food, fuel, fiber, medicine, paper, plastics, fiberboard, and thousands of other, other products, and we know it's an industry that creates jobs. Over the course of the next five minutes, I will give a brief overview of a subject that could only be given its proper due over the course of a series of three-hour lectures. The subject is how Senator Leach's proposal to create a legal market for cannabis will be an economic boon of immense magnitude to the state of Pennsylvania and will create jobs. There are three economic pillars to cannabis that would sustain a large overall cannabis industry. Hemp, whose pulp and fiber can be used as material in many sectors of our economy, the social use of the cannabis flowering tops and its various preparations, and the medicinal applications stemming from research into the active cannabinoids, which range from treating migraines to curing cancer. Let's start with hemp. There's an inscription engraved on the National Archives in Washington, D.C. that reads, the heritage of the past is the seed that brings forth the harvest of the future. So it, is, so it is that we look to our heritage and our rich traditions of history. When William Penn founded Pennsylvania in 1681, he specifically intended for the Commonwealth to produce hemp. In 1683, one of the first measures passed by the Pennsylvania General Assembly was an act for raising hemp in Pennsylvania. In 1685, William Penn noted great quantities of hemp already cultivated in his province and declared that hemp would be among the staples of trade here. By the 1690s, the hemp industry was already well established here, with hemp mills running, rope walks making rope, hemp hecklers and weavers and farmers in every early settlement growing the crop. Hemp production proceeded with vigor, and in 1729, the county of Lancaster was formed, containing the original Hempfield Township, named for, quote, the vast quantities of hemp raised there. In Lancaster County alone, between the years of 1720 and 1870, there were over 100 water-powered mills for processing hemp fiber, and there were dozens more hemp mills uh, in all the surrounding counties. There were almost as many mills for processing oil from the many tons of excess hemp seed, a byproduct of the enormous hemp industry grown for fiber, and this extended in all parts of Pennsylvania. Today, my good friend Sean House makes hempsel pretzels and other products from imported hemp seed from Canadian farmers. Sean would rather contract out with local farmers to grow a seed. Sean is just one of many entrepreneurs who would love to contract with American farmers. In Kentucky, where Senator Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell are pushing hard for hemp, Kentucky Agricultural J Commissioner James Comer ha has made uh, his number one legislative priority to reintroduce hemp. He says that it will produce thousands of jobs in his state. Many companies are looking to do some very interesting and intriguing things with hemp. Patriot Energy, among others, are looking to make methane, biodiesel, ethanol, gasoline, jet fuel, and use hemp as a biomass in conjunction with coal for its BTU value, and even using it as horse bedding. Whole houses are being with, made with hempcrete, a mixture of hemp and lime. Many similar opportunities await intelligent industries here in Pennsylvania. Medical cannabis is also intriguing. Pennsylvania ha also has uh, a history of many companies scattered ac across the state making patent medicines, medicines from cannabis. The most important aspect of medical cannabis is, of course, that it will benefit so many people suffering from cancer, AIDS, glaucoma, MS, and a long list of ailments. But there is a compelling argument to be made from the economic side. California has already raised over $100 million in tax revenue from medical cannabis, and Michigan raised $10 million uh, in t revenue just last year. In some areas of Colorado and California, it has contributed to revitalizing, revitalizing whole neighborhoods. The U.S. medical marijuana market totals roughly $1.7 billion and could grow fivefold to $8.9 billion by 2016. 
smart investors stand to make a lot of money. Not to mention the jobs created by the dispensaries, the growing co-ops, and all related industries. But establishing a legal market for the responsible adult social use of cannabis will be huge, though, in terms of economic impact. The number of jobs will be large, undoubtedly in the thousands, perhaps tens of thousands. The Keystone State has a unique strategic geographic location that gives us close proximity to all major markets on the East Coast. This will be of great benefit to us when the national prohibition of cannabis and hemp falls, something that will most likely occur faster than previously considered. Pennsylvania should be among the first out of the starting gate to claim our share of the rewards in terms of tax revenue, job creation, and reducing the staggeringly high cost of this terrible, insane, and immoral prohibition. Lastly, I'd like to conclude with something to think about. We hear some talk about the dangers of a legal market for cannabis and hemp. We don't use, usually hear much about these concerns when the attendant dangers of fracking and nuclear energy, uh, <clears throat> despite uh, about fracking and nuclear energy, despite the fact that a catastrophe involving those industries would be orders of magnitude greater than what could go wrong in a hemp field. We don't ban those industries, though. Instead, we uh, the people press for wise regulations to mitigate our genuine concerns. Wise regulations could similarly address the concerns some residents may have regarding cannabis. I must say, though, that not much could go wrong. While sometimes uh, people die in coal mines, no farmer will ever get trapped in a hemp field and, and not be able to get, make, make it back out. But let's suppose a farmer did find himself trapped in a field of cannabis. Although we may feel concerned for both the trapped coal miner and the farmer, one drastic difference is that the farmer might not be in as big of a hurry to be rescued. <laughs> Remember, jobs, J-O-B-S, but if you leave industrial hemp, medical and social use of cannabis out of the equation, you leave out the average Joe and leave us with BS. Okay, any uh, questions at all? Um, yes.